because a lot of you have been wondering like why not Harvard December 13th 14th I found out that I got in I had already paid the application fee <laughs> gotten into four of the five schools then I was down obviously to Harvard and Yale crying just because I was so stressed about the decision finally getting into the the, the nitty-gritty Hi guys, so this is my second take of this video um, because I said I wanted it to be really casual but evidently I can't do it without some planning so um, here I am basically uh, as you can tell from the title of this video I wanted to talk a little bit about my college application process and just how I picked my school in the end so it's gonna be a really general rundown of what my application process was like and then into how I decided but I did want to give this disclaimer first that I can only speak to what my experiences were like I can't give you foolproof tips I will help you decide your dream school um, you can only do that for yourself I'm just going to be talking you through what my process was like and how I eventually decided on my school hopefully you can get some guidance from my story but again it's not really going to be quote-unquote tips or general tips just a reflection that hopefully you can take something from so yeah Okay, so to start off, in the United States, just as a really brief rundown, you have a couple different application cycles for college. Generally, you apply in your last year of high school, your senior year, and you have early action or early decision. Those are the application processes where you apply during the fall of your senior year. So that's generally the fall before you would be going to college, assuming that you you know, are on a traditional pathway or trajectory. And then you have regular decisions, which is usually due like January 1st-ish. And that's the general application process where you are applying to schools. Just generally, I want to be considered with the whole application pool. That's what that is. And then usually early action or early decision is considered you expressing higher interest in those schools. Now with my personal application process. So all the schools that I had planned on submitting from the very beginning, because I started working on all my applications over the summer before my senior year, I had planned on submitting Amherst, Boston College, Brown, Duke, MIT, Tufts, UPenn, Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Georgetown, and Rutgers. The whole reason why I had mostly really top schools was because I knew that my ultimate, not necessarily like baseline school, but the school that I knew that I would be able to get into as a New Jersey high school student and resident with pretty good academics, I knew that I would be able to get into Rutgers. So that was the one that I was okay with going to if none of these other options worked out. These were all just like, if I can, awesome. But I decided to submit Yale Early Action. So basically saying I'm expressing high interest in being admitted to this university. So I submitted my application in the early pool. And the reason for that is because one, historically at my school when it comes to Ivy Leagues, between like Harvard, Yale for those really top schools, Yale is more common at my high school. Um, I'll get a little bit more into that later, but statistically speaking, it was a little bit easier just for my high school specifically to get into Yale. There are a lot of awesome alumni from my high school. So that's why I figured, hey, if I'm gonna early anywhere, I'll give it a shot. So that's what I did. Cause a lot of you have been wondering like, why not Harvard? Why didn't you early to Harvard? No one's gotten to Harvard from my high school for so, so long. It just seemed like to me, it would be a waste of an early action application because the way that it works for a single choice early action, which is for a lot of top schools, you end up being able to only submit one application to a university early action unless it's a public university. Of those schools, Rutgers was the only public university that I applied to also during the early round. For the November 1st deadline of my senior year, which is 2018, I submitted Yale and Rutgers. That's just to bring you up to speed to that point. Then come December 13th, 14th, I found out that I got in, which was insane. You guys saw how that went. <laughs> um, so what happened at that point was uh, all those applications that I had had prepared up to the beginning of my senior year, like all those schools that I mentioned, I didn't submit them. Um, I did have them ready to go. Like I could have submitted them if I wanted to, but it didn't seem worth it because I knew that if it was down to any of those schools and Yale, I would pick Yale. So um, I decided not to. 
Um, and I know that does seem a bit excessive to some people, like why would you make all those applications um, and not submit them, like what about all the hard work? But the thing is, I, I'm i glad that I gave myself that safety net because it could have easily gone the other way where I was rejected or deferred from Yale. Um, so then I, at least I wasn't scrambling or I wouldn't have been scrambling for the last few weeks of December. So I'm proud of myself for doing that and I highly suggest that if you can, if you're capable, you definitely should prepare ahead of time as much as you can. You should be preparing during the college application process for any uncertainties, just because nothing is a given ever. Do yourself that favor because it will save a lot of stress down the line. So that's, I guess, one tip that I can give um, at that point of the application process. But I did decide to keep my applications for uh, Harvard, Princeton, and Georgetown. That's because I did consider those pretty good schools that I would consider going to. In Georgetown also, <laughs> um, I had already paid the application fee. <laughs> So, I already, you know, submitted the fee and most of the documents. So I was like, yeah, I'll just finish it up. So, <laughs> sorry to be completely candid about that. That was just my uh, view on that. I did keep those three applications. So then uh, that brought me to a total of five applications. I submitted those for the regular decision round. So that brings us up to speed to the beginning of 2019. Um, I found out that I got into Harvard, rejected from Princeton, and then got into Georgetown. Around April, it was just the decision process. I found out I got into four of the five schools that I wanted to get into, Rutgers, Georgetown, Harvard, and Yale. So I knew that Rutgers was out because surprisingly, Rutgers gave me the least amount of money of those three schools. Um, so. Even though it's like my state school, it gave me the least amount of money. So I was like, no thank you. And then I went to look at Georgetown. Georgetown was actually pretty generous considering their statistics of not giving too much aid. They were pretty generous for Georgetown. So I was really, really grateful for that. But because by that point I decided instead of poli sci, I want to pursue neuroscience. So Georgetown was obviously, or pretty obviously to me out in that sense, just because poli sci is strongest at Georgetown, which is why I was heavily considering it, but maybe not so much STEM uh, and neuroscience. So then I was down obviously to Harvard and Yale. Now at that point, I was really torn because they're both such amazing schools, who wouldn't be torn? Like not even in my wildest dreams, I think I would get to pick between these two schools. It's still so weird to think about, honestly. I visited both schools. Um, was not able to visit for the official admitted students weekend visit toss um, for Harvard, but I was able to go to the admitted students weekend Bulldog Days for Yale, which I actually vlogged, it was a lot of fun. I met a lot of my really cool friends there, but I was able to visit Harvard for an overnight stay. Um, so I was able to stay there for uh, like two days, one night. So that was fun. I was at least able to get some sense of what it's like there. But the reason why I was so torn is because Yale I had really like fallen in love with for like what, three months? Because that was like, I was like, oh, I'm a Yale for like three months. That was like the only school I knew that I'd gotten into that I was really excited about. I wasn't just going to like have the acceptance and not be excited about it. And then I got into Harvard, so that kind of threw me for a loop. So then I had to really reset because the thing is I knew that this was such an important decision to make because it would affect the trajectory of the rest of my life. It was a little scary to think about. I did have many days where I would be crying just because I was so stressed about the decision. And I know that sounds so bad because it's like, I was lucky to even have that choice to make. And I know that now too, still. I know that I'm so lucky to have even had that decision to make. So after visiting the schools and um, talking with other pre-frosh that I knew who were deciding between Harvard and Yale, I eventually decided on Harvard, obviously, for these reasons. So finally getting into the, the the nitty gritty. And by the way, these aren't in any particular order. So first location, I was very much more inclined towards Boston for several reasons. Location was a pretty big one actually. So one, because I knew that I wanted to do neuroscience, there were a lot more hospitals and such in the area that I knew I would want to get volunteering or internship or research experience at that has proven to work out pretty well. I do have a research position with Massachusetts General Hospital, so very, very blessed for that, for sure. But I was just kind of thinking ahead in that sense. That was something that I was personally interested in. Um, and if you're not, obviously, again, this is this this is just what my experience was like. So I did want to try to give myself as many opportunities in that sense to be able to do research if I wanted to down the line. Honestly, the biggest thing was the fact that my sister goes to Boston College, so I would be near her. And that was so, so important 
to me. I don't know what I would have done this past year if I hadn't been able to have her come to me right away or me go to her right away if either of us were struggling with anything. She is honestly like my lifeline, my support system. So I knew that being able to go to school, literally a 20 minute drive away from her was everything to me. Honestly, like the deal, the deal maker like that was like pretty much it but obviously there were other factors too so something that Yale really really caught me with was the people I mean I had spent those past three months after getting in getting to know everyone and getting to really just fall in love with the community I'd built and then also meeting so many people at Bulldog Days it was just insane it was the honestly one of the best experiences of my life still and that was the biggest thing that would have drawn me from Harvard towards Yale in terms of making that decision and this was really really hard to do but I knew I had to try to look at it as objectively as possible I knew that the students who had been admitted to Harvard too had to have been just as charismatic, energetic, intelligent, kind as the students I met at Yale. Even though I might not have known that at the time I was still aware of the fact that it would be true and I didn't want to let my personal subjective experiences with the students at Yale affect my potential experiences with the students at Harvard. So even though that really like threw me off um, and it was really hard to do, I tried to be as objective as possible and say, you know what, just because I met these amazing incredible students at Yale doesn't mean that I can't give the potential friendships I'll form at Harvard a try. Let me just say, pretty good if I do say so myself. I met some of the best people that I've ever known at Harvard and then I can still meet you know, see my Yale friends um, at the Harvard Yale game every year. So it's honestly a really good compromise, especially for students who are picking between Harvard and Yale. You'll be able to see your friends at both schools either way, like at least once a year, guaranteed. You're gonna find great people wherever you go. So I don't know if that's been throwing off anyone else who has applied to a school early and then considering an option from regular decision. I would suggest trying to be as objective as possible if you can, just because if you're able to make friends easily at one school, you'll likely be able to make the friends at another school, if that makes sense. But if it's really important to you, of course, go for the school where you made those friendships already. That'll make it so much easier in the coming year for sure. This is just, again, and I'm making this disclaimer throughout this entire video, this is just based off of my own experiences, so yeah. And then uh, two more big factors. Money-wise, Harvard did offer me a little bit more money than Yale. And I know that Harvard and Yale are pretty easy to argue in terms of the financial package. And I know that if you want to, the option is definitely there of using one university's financial aid package as uh, leverage against the other to try to get them to raise it. I just didn't see myself doing that. Um, it's just like the finances stuff with college is already so overwhelming for my family. I guess I just don't wanna go through that whole process and stick it out and wait to see what would happen with the package. But in hindsight, I feel like it would have been a good idea. So I think if you can, you should. And I know this is really late for all the, all the students who are deciding for this deadline. Um, but maybe in the future, future students who are applying to colleges, um, consider the whole um, arguing about financial aid stuff. That whole process is foreign to me, but I know that it exists, so you should definitely look into it if it's something that you're interested in. And then finally with the program, when I went to Bulldog Days, I did go on a, like a tour, like a science tour, where it's like all the kids who are interested in like STEM and stuff, you guys can take a tour with a current student who will take you around some of our facilities and such. And I, the first thing that struck me was the fact that Yale is in the process of building its STEM buildings and such, and from the looks of it, it's gonna be amazing. Like, future students, you're gonna have such amazing resources if you go to Yale for, for STEM or neuroscience, which is what I was looking at. But I just, with where I am in my academic career, I needed to be able to jump right in. I didn't have those resources or that research experience from high school, so I really needed as much support as I could to get me started in the STEM area um, and Harvard's already been pretty well established with uh, being able to do joint research or joint classes at MIT which is something you can start doing as a sophomore. Again all those research opportunities with hospitals and such in the area and labs in the area. I felt like it would just be a lot less overwhelming for me to navigate the whole STEM path um, at Harvard versus Yale. So again I was really looking towards like the future with a lot of my decision process 
And with all those factors taken into account, I did decide that Harvard would probably be the best decision for me. I can honestly say that I'm very, very happy with my decision. I don't really regret it, like at all. That's not to say that I wouldn't have been happy at Yale. I know for a fact, I definitely 100% would have been. That just goes to show that wherever you end up picking, you will be okay. You just want to try to go about it as logically and calmly as you can. That's the best thing that you can do for your own mental health and your sanity. Consider the factors that are most important to you and what you're really looking for in your college experience. I would say you don't have to worry too much about talking to current students. I mean, you can obviously do reading online from student accounts and such, but really just if you do your own research, I think, and again, this is just what I found worked for me, doing my own research and really just making a very personalized pro-con list of both schools. And so long as you're considering what is most important to you, you will be able to make the decision that will help you gain the most out of your college experience. Hopefully you are able to get something out of this. I'm filming this very much on a whim just because I've been getting a lot of comments and DMs about it. Um, and I am sorry that's coming so late, but I just never really, really considered it um, until now. Congratulations again to the class of 2020 for all of your amazing uh, college decisions and for weathering such a tough semester, end of your high school career. My heart really does go out to you and I'm so sorry that you have to be dealing with all this right now um hopefully the college experience will make up for it i really do believe it will reach out to me for sure if you have any more questions i do respond to dms when i can i'm on my instagram right here so i post a lot of my story posting like resources and stuff that i've heard about for the class of 2020 and just general information and about my daily life if you want to keep up and yeah um i hope you guys are all doing well staying safe and healthy and i will see you guys soon bye